If, like me, you thought that using Ryzen 5000 series CPUs on B450 or X470 motherboards wasn't going to be possible until January, like AMD said, then you can rejoice. Happily, and thanks to the, uh, I guess, update from Dr. Hex on the stream last night, uh, there is BIOS upgrades from a, a majority of the motherboard vendors for a majority of their boards to support these new chips. Now, there are a few interesting things that we need to cover here, both from a disclaimer side and from a, well, like I alluded to on Twitter, revelation side, including the one that's in the title. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, there are a few things that you need to know before you go and update your own board. AMD claim that by upgrading to these new BIOS versions, it is irreversible and that it won't support first or second generation Ryzen CPUs anymore and therefore forever after. And so you have to make sure that you have a third or fifth gen CPU ready. And you have to assume that if you do anything along these lines, if you do upgrade your BIOS or if you try and downgrade it or use second gen Ryzen or first gen with these boards with the new BIOS versions, you have to assume you will have no support from AMD or your motherboard vendor and even if you still have warranties, you can probably assume that they might not honor them. So that's the disclaimer, let's get to testing. Now I'm gonna start with this X470 board first, since I haven't updated the BIOS on that one yet, and I can walk you through the process. Now to update the BIOS, it's pretty simple. Go to your motherboard manufacturer's website and find the page for your board, in this case, an X570 Gaming 7. Go to the support and go to the downloads and download the most recent version, which in Gigabyte's ca case is the F60C BIOS. Open the file and, or download it, open the file and copy or extract the contents to a USB stick to the root normally, um, ideally an empty USB stick to make it simple. And then you can plug your USB stick into your system and flip the power switch and then you can boot it up. Now, as it boots up, you're gonna to wanna to be pressing the delete key or basically spamming it so that we can get into the BIOS and do our upgrade. You want to have a second or third gen CPU here. If you have a third gen CPU, in theory, that does make this easier as in theory, it will mean that you can have a, a direct support after the, after the fact effectively um, and you don't have to switch your CPUs immediately afterwards. Now, with that said, to, to update this bus, generally speaking on most boards, they have some sort of utility that's called something flash. Azrox is instant flash, uh, Gigabyte is Q flash. It's all pretty similar and where it is can vary. So in this case, it's on this lower tab down here. Although in Azrox case, it's under the tools menu. It's generally around there somewhere. To update it, in this case, you click update BIOS, click on the new BIOS file, click the next, and then press start. And then don't touch anything. Let it, let it go, let it start, let it run, don't turn it off, uh, don't you know, touch anything at all, let it go. It will restart on its own. And then if you have a second gen CPU, at least in theory anyway, it now won't boot. So make sure that you either have your third or fifth gen CPU at hand, or just wait a second. I say in theory because of that. Yeah, it just booted up. I haven't swapped the CPUs over. I still have the very thermal paste covered 5900X here, uh, and I'm using a 2700 non-X um, for this. In fact, you can actually maybe even see it on screen um, it's still the 2700 and I'm using the new F60C BIOS. That means at least for the two boards that I have tested, second gen CPUs still work even on the new BIOS upgrades. Now, I, I tested this a lot more thoroughly on the B5, uh, B450 board, the Azrox Steel Legend, and as far as I can tell, the support is genuine. It's not just a bug that it, that it lets it boot up or whatever. The performance is just as you'd expect. The boost behavior is exactly what you would expect as well. I ran Cinebench to confirm that. Um, and so yeah, as far as I can tell, second gen CPUs seem to work just fine with the new BIOS versions on those X, uh, X470 and B450 boards. Either way, that's enough playing with the old stuff. Let's drop the new chip in and see how that handles. Right, so the new chip is in and is working fine as expected. We're in the BIOS to set XMP and I wanted to show you that 
Uh, one of the new features that these, these BAS updates allow for is the above 4G decoding and specifically the resizable bar support. That is the underpinnings of AMD's new smart access memory uh, feature from their new R RX 6000 series graphics cards. And that is now available on these older boards. Uh, thanks to these BIOS upgrades. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any RX 6000 series GPUs to throw in this and test that out, um, but it is nice to see that it's there. Now, we're going to boot into Windows just to have a play around, and then we'll swap over to the B450 board, as that one's technically a lot more of a, a challenging option for the 50, uh, 5900X to, uh, to run, and it's also going to be a lot more common uh, to have or for, for you guys to have so we want to see that one working as well. Oh, and I should also mention that much like with the Ryzen 3000 series supports for these boards, unfortunately, PCI Gen 4 still isn't made available, even on things like the top M.2 slot, which goes directly to the CPU. Um, unfortunately, that's still not enabled, even though as far as I'm aware, there's no technical reason why not. But either way, Sadly, it's not there yet. So we're up and running into Windows and I'm going to run Cinebench R20 uh, in the background so that you can see it working and so that you can see the clock speeds, which are all boosting. So right now it's 4.3 gigahertz, pretty much all core, in fact, actually all core um, on the 5900X. So boost works fine and uh, even the single threaded boosts are working fine as well. So that is great to see. In fact, I can actually see that one of the cores was at 4.95 gigahertz at one point when it's single thread boosted, so that's pretty sweet. So you can see that X470 works just fine, but let's test out that B450 board. I'll switch over the motherboards. We'll be back in, well, a second for you, about 10 minutes from me. Right, the B450 Steel Legend board I'm using here is booted up with the, the newest version of the BIOS and using the 5900X. Now, I'm actually stress testing the CPU uh, using Blender here. It's drawing the full sort of 135, 140 watts that you can expect from pretty much any of the 12 or 16 core Ryzen chips. And kind of surprisingly, it's handling it really well. When I tested earlier, the VRMs didn't get above 50 or 60 degrees Celsius, which is plenty fine for VRMs. And despite it being a relatively weak four-phase design, it's handling this no problems. Now that's partially because 140 watts really isn't all that much for a CPU, and because it's still relatively good quality, good, uh, I guess, build quality in the first place, so that's decent. One surprising note is that my testing earlier found that with the 5900X and the B450 motherboard, I actually got 200 points higher in Citibench than I've ever gotten before with B550 or X570 motherboards. Now, 200 points out of 8,000 isn't a massive deal, but it's really surprising to magically find extra performance from what should be an unsupported old motherboard. But there is one more thing I want to show you. On this USB stick, I have a BIOS file for this ASRock B450 Steel Legend board that's a couple of versions old, which means that it technically well, it doesn't support the new 5000 series CPUs, and as you can see from the other camera, I'm using the most recent version, 3.0, and at uh, 3.7, and I'm using a 5900X here. Now I'm going to go to Tool, and I'm going to go to Instant Flash, I'm going to press Update, and I'm going to press Yes. Now, I shouldn't be able to do that, and even if this does work, in theory, it shouldn't, you know, function. I shouldn't be able to have the motherboard back to a previous state. According to AMD and the motherboard vendor statement, as they say that it is irreversible. What we're going to find out though is that it's not, and that this will work just fine. Now, I should say because I've got the 5900X in here, when this does reboot, it won't boot up again, because the board now has an older BIOS version that doesn't support 5th generation Ryzen CPUs, which means I have successfully rolled back the BIOS version again, uh, where AMD said I shouldn't be able to. I'm going to let this restart and you can see for yourself. Right, so it's just finishing the uh, BIOS upgrade and when I press enter, what should happen if this has worked is the system won't boot, it will just keep booting over and over again because it can't actually boot thanks to lack of support from the CPU. So here goes. It will turn itself back on. 
fans will ramp up like crazy because it doesn't know what to do. And after a few seconds, it'll probably turn itself back off again. And there it goes. It'll also turn itself back on again and try again, basically in an infinite loop until I click the power supply switch, which at this point I may as well because as you can see from that camera, nothing's happening besides the system posting over and over and over again. Between what I can only describe as a lie about support not supporting second gen CPUs and the one about it being irreversible, I'm left feeling just incredibly frustrated with AMD here. These claims, as far as I can tell, were made to dissuade people from using their perfectly functional motherboards with these new Ryzen 5000 CPUs and instead force them to upgrade to newer B550 or X570 ones for what seems like no reason. I mean, they had to be forced to offer this support in the first place, and even then they said that it was locked away for a few months after the launch to again effectively trick as many people as they can into buying new boards for these new CPUs instead of using the ones that they might have already had. Now I've only got a very small sample size of boards and especially Ryzen 5000 series CPUs here, and so I would really, really like to see other members of the tech community, including people like Gamers Nexus and Hardware Unbox, to test this out, because uh, they will have a much wider selection of CPUs and motherboards that they can try out and see how it handles for them. But I can only report my findings and well, you've seen them. And as a final note, AMD, if you are watching, please, please don't double down on this. Don't go and force the motherboard vendors to adhere to your original party line. The reason that people, the, the community as a whole, generally has a dislike towards Intel is their regular, you know, anti-consumer behaviors, locking motherboards and RAM speeds and CPUs, whereas you've generally taken the approach of being a much more consumer-friendly organization, and so to do these sorts of what I can only call anti-consumer tactics, I just, it, it ruins the, the, the love and the underdog love that the community has for you, and so please, please just do the right thing. So with all of that said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of this whole situation? Will you run a Ryzen 5000 series CPU on a B450 or X570 or X470 board now instead? Or will you still upgrade? Will you wait for AM5 or even go Intel instead? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, with my track record with companies, there is a slim chance that uh, my access to AMD samples in the future might be slightly more limited. And so if you want to support me and support the channel and make sure that I still have access to these new chips and that, that kind of stuff, then feel free to check out the Patreon link in the description. It helps me buy new hardware that I don't otherwise have access to, or I guess don't get directly sampled. So feel free to check that out. And there's a lot of other links that you can check out, including the affiliate links in the description for places like Amazon. There's also Overclock UK if you're buying from there. There's merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs and a lot of other stuff you can check out too. Otherwise, I'll leave some more videos for you to check out on the end cards. Of course, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you all in the next one.